This is Delhi. Please stand by for our next program. This is All India Radio. In our national program of talks tonight, we now bring you a panel discussion entitled Maharana Pratap, the indefatigable warrior. The panelists are Maharaj Kumar, Sri Lakshraj Singh Mewar, Dr. Piyush Bhadavia, Assistant Professor History, Mohanlal Sukhadiya University, Udaipur, and Dr. Sharath Srivastava, Retired Professor, Department of English, and former Dean, Arts College, Mohanlal Sukhadiya University, who initiates and moderates the discussion. Bravery, Valor, Indomitable Spirit, Perseverance, Honesty, Patriotism, Dignity are synonymous with one legendary figure in history and Mahana Pratap aptly fits into this genre. For those of us who are residents of Mewar, Mahana Pratap is an emotional issue. We carry Pratap as it were in our bones. To add more light and credence to a discussion on this eternal hero are our esteemed panelists in the form of Maharaj Kumar, Sri Lakshra Singh Ji, and Dr. Piyush Bhadviya. The presence of Maharaj Kumar Sri Lakshra Singh Ji acquires special significance because he himself belongs to the long line of illustrious descendants of Marna Pratap. In this sense, he not only carries the legacy of Pratap with him, but his awareness and knowledge on Pratap is that of an insider who knows more about him than what is written in mainstream history or is part of common knowledge. Besides, Lakshra Singh Ji epitomizes in him the scholar, the naturalist, a connoisseur of art, the entrepreneur and a philanthropist all rolled into one, an all-rounder in the truest sense of the word. We hope his views on Mahana Pratap will enhance our already existing storehouse of knowledge. Dr. Piyush Bhadviya is a faculty in Mohanlal Sukhadeya University, Udaipur. He is an academic. Although his domain is history, no subject is beyond his scholarship. Again, his views on Pratap as an academic will give us new insight on the subject. Mahana Pratap, as we all know, occupies a unique place in history and he has a distinctive position. Lakshra Singh Ji, you are part of that legacy, an insider as I said earlier. What you think is your message to the youth or in other words, what is the contemporary relevance of Mahana Pratap's ideals to the present youth and his ideas which could be equally useful for the youth and humankind as such, as such views on gender sensitivity. Well, firstly, greetings uh, to everyone. I think there are a lot of questions uh, in uh, one, but I think in your earlier statements, there are certain things that I did pick up on, which I would like to share my, my thoughts and on views on. That uh, today in Mewar, we uh, feel uh, and absorb, uh, respect and understand uh, uh, the great uh, warrior Marana Pratap to our bones. I would like to make a slight uh, change in an addition to that is that not only to our bones but I think to the core of our soul and uh, I also feel that uh, Pratap is not only limited as far as our uh, city or area is concerned I think he is exceptionally celebrated uh, in the entire nation which is I think a great uh, feeling that we come from the land of uh, Mewar where we have an individual who is exceptionally celebrated in the entire nation. And I think today, in a context of not only as far as the deeds are concerned, but I certainly do feel when I do interact with some of the youth, when we have conversations, I think the important point that one feels uh, while having these discussions is as well that today, Maharana Pratap is still very much alive amongst all of us in spirit and in the thought and the legacy that he has left behind, which is, I think, a great uh, feeling, a great sentiment, um, a great uh, base to build on today's uh, youth and the journey that uh, the young have 
that they are going to be taking forward. My colleague here who's far more learned on me in terms of specific history would be able to share that much more light on it. But I do certainly feel in the way that the nation is going or the world is going in terms of technology, we are getting consumed and absorbed with other things. I think today the intangible values that exist uh, in our nation, which is exceptionally strong and embedded, I think really get very well uh, epitomized by uh, Maharana Pratap. And today, what we not only have to do is to only talk about it, but we have to practice it in our uh, daily life. I think being upright, being honest, uh, uh, being faithful, uh, doing things in a very just manner, taking things and people uh, along with you, trying to find uh, solutions, not compromising and not letting go of a goal that you may have in mind. So all those are things that we get to learn, to absorb from this great hero uh, that we have in our uh, land, where we don't have to look too far. Today, for example, a student with the exam times coming, a student may be demoralized. He may feel that there, are, there may be things not going their way. There may be things in other um, people's lives that they may not uh, see it um, unfolding in the manner that they may have wished to. Those are the times we start taking inspiration from our hero, the great Maharana Pratap at that point in time, that even he faced far more difficult situations and circumstances that were confronted. He also had easier choices, but he chose to take the right path. And I think that is where in today's 21st century context, where we are getting limited in terms of games to video games and visions to televisions, here we have somebody who we can actually uh, pick up things from and really lift our spirits and keep our goal and keep our luxe absolutely clean and clear and make sure that we walk that uh, path, however difficult it may be in today's context taking inspiration from those examples that he may have faced at that point in time. So those are the sort of things that I would like to discuss with the youth that we should come back to our books, we should come back to our roots, we should come back to our culture, we should come back to our values and we don't have to look too far and we don't have to do things which are, uh, you know, people talk about connotations of outside the box. We have to do simple things as a human race. Uh, what I have also noticed and especially with the youth, we like to fix things that are not broken. You know, our life is going in a great manner. We are uh, approaching things and doing things that the the, uh, the way we want them to be done. But yes, of course, things will go up and down. Things may not go, go our way. And those are the challenges. The bigger point is how to convert a disadvantage into an advantage. And that is the lesson we also get out of uh, Maharana Pratap. I think you may have to add something about the gender sensitivity aspect also. So as far as uh, an interesting point in terms of gender sensitivity, there is an ex exceptionally interesting quote and a discussion between uh, uh, father and son, uh, Maharana uh, Pratap and uh, uh, Maharana Amar Singh Ji, when uh, we obviously have heard and read in our history and in our culture, in our books, uh, when there was a camp that was uh, taken over, uh, some of the ladies uh, with uh, them were also brought back as uh, captives and it was an interesting conversation and these days the question is that at home how many people and how many families are still following that culture when both the uh, individuals the father and the son both in in this regard Maharana Pratap and Maharana Amar Singh Ji both had a conversation where he explained to him the values of uh, Mewar the uh, the respect that we have for somebody who may not be our good friend and we do not do things that the others may be doing to us because that is not what our identity is. That is not what our culture is. That is not what the land where we uh, come from. We come from a land where we hold the highest value and highest respect, even if it so be for the enemy. And now those are the conversations. Now it is a lesson that may have been told 400 or 450 years uh, ago, but it is so strongly standing uh, in time today without it wavering that even today we are discussing this in our studio here that how important it is for a father and son to have a conversation how important it is for cultural exchanges and respect and values of the family to be explained in action 
not just in conversation and look at the impact that it has had so so that for so many generations that ideology today has still carried on so respecting women and uh, was obviously something which was exceptionally high in value of our land which we do still feel that today we uphold that to the greatest value to the best way possible and if we can do better if that can be bettered in our daily life then there could be no better incident than this to draw inspiration from oh that was wonderful explication of both the ideas uh, lakshra singh ji and now i have the uh, second panelist uh, who i believe uh, belongs to the particular domain of history as i said earlier and uh, will be able to answer uh, this aspect or this question in a better way historians give a lot of space to the fact that maharana pratap was a great military strategist what precisely was this strategy and how did it help him overpower his enemies in the battle that he fought let me add one more thing here before uh, you answer this question it is said that he brought the battle out of the confines of the forts and took it to the hills to the hills and to difficult terrains how far it is true and what your views are on this thank you sir when maharana pratap ascended the throne in 1572 ad mewar was in a sorry state of affairs uh, nobility was disheartened due to the reverse suffered at chittorgarh in 1568 when the earlier context that we have to wait for the enemy in the fort and we can fight with them proved wrong and akbar was successful in capturing the chittor and there was a third saka and johar due to the disheartening caused maharana uday singh changed his strategy and decided to fight the enemy in the hill zone and to make the whole hill as a fort and the similar strategy was adopted by maharana pratap in the ensuing battle which he thought of it and from 1572 to 1576 maharana pratap was eagerly preparing for the fight with the akbar because he well understood that there cannot be any diplomatic maneuvering right from the side of akbar or from his own side because akbar was a rank imperialist and maharana pratap was a rank freedom fighter who had to defend his motherland defend his population defend his cultural identity and to restore back the prestige of the illustrious house so the missions were clear in the eyes of the maharana pratap and akbar also regarded mewar as a thorn in his eyes because he had won over all the rajput principalities through the tactics matrimony and alliance and etc and the trade route to gujarat also passed through the mewar so there was an a fight which was offered by the akbar and maharana pratap was waiting for it so he prepared his ground for that now in 1576 when man singh attacks to mewar he doesn't offer fight at mandalgarh which used to be the earlier tradition or in the chittorgarh so he allowed the enemy to come to the hill zone of haldighati pass he was understanding his strength because he very well understood the philosophy and practice of the islamic invaders they could attack at night they could do any cheating so he was very well aware whom he is fighting for and his strategy develops on the knowledge of his friends and foes both alike his strategy develops on the knowledge of the terrain okay mewar had a natural phenomenon of hill aravli and all these things but to have that knowledge to use that knowledge knowledge of the um, rivers knowledge of the food grains knowledge of the common people who will help and who may go against him so the strategy was developed and battle was offered at haldighati and eventually maharana pratap emerged as a victorious because the whole episode goes from the day of 18th june 1576 to september and finally man singh had to evacuate the places which he just uh, conquered or which he just uh, relinquished and he had to go back and mandan kumpavat was made the thikanedar or kiledar of the gogunda back so what were the task given to the man singh or to other people either to catch pratap to kill pratap or to uh, offer to get a victory over the capital all the tasks were failed and it utterly disappointed akbar so this strategy of fighting in the hills heartened or just uh, made people believe in the pratap's strategy and the whole population came with pratap because now they felt fearless 
because they now understood that Maharana Pratap could make us live the life of freedom and it was a wise decision for the Maharana Pratap to offer a battle in the hill and to emerge as victorious because now it was not the fight of the military personnel and other than the military personnel, it was the whole population of Mewar who was suffering, who was offering a battle to the mighty emperor and that was the strategy of Maharana Pratap which ensured till the Diwar of Marathon which we say Colonel James Todd told and Colonel James Todd also told that this was a battle equitable to the battle of Thermopylae, where the Greeks, less in number, defeated the Persian and they were successful in thwarting back their enemies. So the whole strategy runs from the knowledge of your population, your mining resources, your military form formulations and how the people will take on to you and there is an incidence that no person, irrespective of the inducement offered from the Akbar side, changed their side. No one acted as a traitor to Mahana Prata. We have never listened to any story. Every person, right from the childhood to adult to the old age, supported the cause of the Mewar of the freedom. Uh, thank you, Dr. Badviya. Continuing with the uh, idea of uh, uh, Pratap as a strategist and your reference to the Battle of Haldi Ghati and subsequently to Tiver, I think uh, a lot can be said about the Battle of Haldi Ghati. And uh, it would be in the fitness of things uh, to address this question afresh. Uh, it is said that the Battle of Haldigati was more of a moral victory than anything else. I think Lakshraji is well equipped to have his frank views on the subject. Certainly. I think first thing that been obviously the historical facts can come, but what is exceptionally important for us to see and understand in this is that there were choices and the choices were to be able to run away to not have this battle at all not fight for your right not fight for freedom not to fight for righteousness these were all options they all existed certain others did take that path as well so i think that is where what um, i feel that the entire crux of morality for us lies over there that we did not give up we uh, chose to stand and uh, face what came to us and uh, not uh, compromise on the ethics, the morals and the belief system of Mewar that has been coming for so many centuries before that. And every time a human being is tempted to take the easier option out, outcomes can be debated, other things can be debated. But the fact what cannot be debated is that we stood the test of time. And I think that is what is the most uh, important uh, takeaway uh, as far as the uh, Battle of Haldigati is concerned. And the fact that everybody came united in this, what, what I feel is that numbers were not of relevance, but your sheer core strength and your belief that you had within your soul was of more value to being able to stand tall and tough against an enemy who the rest of the country or the rest of the places did not even uh, think twice about surrendering to. So I think that uh, today, uh, that is what makes us today work with our uh, heads uh, held high and with pride, with dignity that we are people that uh, who did not compromise on, uh, on a junction or did not uh, sell our uh, soul. Yes, we compromised on not getting economical uh, welfare. We compromised in not, um, uh, you know, uh, giving away um, land and property. You know, th those are things that people can debate and discuss till the cows come home. But what is of importance and of value for us to be able to ex uh, understand is exactly that the easier options were never an option. And, and I think that is what very clearly comes out of uh, this particular uh, uh, incident and I think to take it one step further uh, not only to discuss uh, in terms of humans but I think uh, and it is I think absolutely apt and very important to mention here that not only did the people of Mewar as very correctly uh, mentioned uh, earlier that you know did not cheat and did not uh, betray so it is not only restricted to people even the um, uh, valued um, uh, horse uh, that uh, and companion of uh, Maharana Pratap Chetak, I think has also got his uh, name written in uh, golden letters in our history. So you know, this is what the land had to offer and this is the impact that it had on um, all life 
that existed on our uh, particular terrain and i think it would be unfair to not uh, mention that so you know i think that is where uh, we uh, that is where it, uh, to the extent where the loyalty and the uh, uh, or, uh, loyalty and the entire intensity of people believing in one ideology goes to you know so i think there is a lot of inspiration there is a, a, a lot of uh, takeaways uh, from uh, this particular uh, 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 moral takeaways from the battle of uh, Haldigati, which should never be forgotten and one of the reasons why we uh, walk so freely and the word Swatantra was given birth to then, you know, when we read certain books, when we understand and talk to historians, a lot of these sort of facts that come out in history uh, are, are happened because a person and an individual decided to take a stand that he decided to take. Oh, that was a wonderful answer. I think Dr. Bhadia would like to add something before I take up the other aspect. As rightly said Maharaj Kumar Saab, that right from many centuries, the Mewad rulers were able to successfully uh, threaten back the invasion of the Islamic invaders, especially right from the Bappa Rawal to Jaitra Singh and to then again to Marana Kumba and Marana Sangha, uh, took the whole banner of Rajput, Rajputana under his flag and fought against the mighty ruler Babar. And again, when we find Maharana Pratap's strategy, there was no migration under the difficult situation of Mewar. There was emigration, no immigration. People were coming from Gwalior. Ram Shah Tamar was coming with his whole family to fight under the banner of Maharana Pratap. Hakim Kansuri was coming to Mewar to fight under the banner of Maharana Pratap. And when he needed wealth and money, then he entrusted the task to his trusted noble uh, Bhama Shah and he carried the money from the Malwa and de deposited under his feet at the Chulia village in Eder. So such type of things were developed by Marana Pratap as a strategy with respect to the monetary support, with respect to the horses as rightly said, the, which type of horse you have to sit, symbol of bravery, symbol of loyalty, chatak. So such things were developed, which type of sword you have to use, the Khanda was used by Marana Pratap and all these things. So rightly said he was a great strategist, a general extraordinary. Very well handled. These days, a lot is being talked about an all-inclusive approach. In this sense, Mahana's recognition and inclusion of Beals is considered a reformist step. By the way, the insignia of Mewar shows a Rajput warrior on the one hand and a Beal on the other, symbolic of the cooperation and recognition of the two. What more light would you like to throw on this subject? Hey, sir. There is a very different situation in Mewar. Certain areas were given autonomous to the Beals. There were uh, some uh, towns like Ogna, Pandarva and their rulers, there were chiefs, were also well equated by the Maranas here. And during the difficult times, they rallied in favor of the Marana. They never go against the Marana's position. And in the Battle of Haldigati, right to the Tiwar, and even afterwards, they were rallied under one banner of Marana Pratap and other Maranas, always they supported. So the symbol of one side, the Bill ruler is there in Marana is there, just giving them equality in the context of the rule and the support which Marana Pratap and other rulers have gained from the Bills and other tribes. And uh, I was told that there was a migration, emigration from the Ramshan Tamar and all these people rallied because they had a firm belief in the attitude, character, personality of Marana Pratap. And it was very wise of the Marana Pratap, as rightly said by Maharaj Kumar Saab, to choose to fight against the mighty emperor and that made his position clear in the minds of the people and all different states were looking ahead of the freedom on the side of Mewar. I think that subject uh, has been dealt with uh, in a very pertinent way and uh, we could have volumes of it. Uh, we, could, we could speak for hours on this subject and the subject of uh, Rana Pratap is so, so vast uh, so full of passion that we cannot encompass it within the capsule of a few minutes. The esteemed panelists here, uh, Lakshra Singh Ji and Dr. Bhadviya, I would just like to have one sentence each from you as some kind of a conclusive statement on Mahana Pratap. Okay, Dr. Piyush Bhadviya. I would like to say with respect to the inclusiveness, Marana Pratap, the leader exemplary in the world, in many contexts, the leader exemplary. I think there's only one line and one phrase, uh, or there, there are a lot of things that come in just one sentences, but there are so many of those one sentences that come to your mind. 
Uh, there is a, a small couplet that comes to my mind that is of uh, Shri Pandit Narendra Mishra. I think if I can uh, say that, then I think in in terms of closure um, or, or in terms of concluding the the ideology or the thought that an individual or people wish to take forward is uh, it's a it's a two liner couplet ki aandhi toofano mein mewad ne rukna nahi sikha lakho nangi talwaron ke samne jhukna nahi sikha sheesh katne ke baad bhi dhad yahan lada karte hain aur mewad ne kabhi bikna nahi si bahut khub so i think that is what i would uh, say in terms of all in all maharna is still remembered as a nationalist and freedom fighter fighting for the freedom of his motherland and the pride of his community facing all adversity denying himself and his family all the comforts and privileges enjoyed by his other counterparts but the maharna was made of a different metal his grit was heavier than the armor he wore he was destined to occupy a unique place in history and serve as a beacon light to the posterity for st- standing steadfast in his noble ideals so that was i believe a wonderful discussion and we look forward to many more thank you maharaj kumar laksha singh ji thank you so thank much you, thank you dr badwia and you. thank you team all india radio in our national program of talks tonight you heard a panel discussion entitled maharana pratap the indefatigable warrior the panelists were maharaj kumar shri laksha raj singh mewar Dr Piyush Bhadavia Assistant Professor History Mohanlal Sukhadia University Udaipur and Dr Sharad Srivastava Retired Professor Department of English and former Dean Arts College Mohanlal Sukhadia University who initiated and moderated the discussion produced by Sanjay Vyas of AI Udaipur This program came to you from the Delhi station of All India Radio.